Well, here we are to talk about the moment and the moments that led up to the moment, the ultimate moment for the Sharkies fans to break almost a 50-year drought. The porch light eventually got turned off and this bloke here played a large part in it. Lukey Lewis, the first ever premiership for the Sharkies. You're part of that. Yeah, but it still brings me goosebumps to think about it, Jolly, to be honest with you. So, um, you know, I couldn't be more happy to be to, to bring up some past memories. So, let's get into it. You were talking about off-air about the fact if you could do one thing at that time and relive it, so to speak, you'd love to go back and be at Northies and experience with the people there, be in the crowd with those experiences. Is that what you Yeah, thought? absolutely. I, I, we talk about it all the time. Uh, always gets brought up about, um, obviously, 2016 grand final and if I could go back to any moment and relive it, it would be 2016, that night. But as a player, it was absolutely amazing. But to see all this, the scenes that I saw... Um, for me, I'd love just to go back and, and be at Norvis at the time when that, that bell won or be at the Sharkies or, you know, be in the houses where, uh, you know, some people have never got to see that opportunity mm. for Sharks in the grand final. I, I think it'd just be absolutely mind-blowing because every time I talk to someone in Cronulla, they always come up and say thank you. Mm. They've always got a tear in their eye. Uh, there are a lot of older people and, um, yeah, some of the footage I see is just absolutely mind-blowing and I sit there and think it'd be a great night. Uh, I've got a couple of friends also that are in yeah. the, the police force and... They said, usually, you know, you get one or two fights, you know, on the, on the weekend or whatever. But, you know, during that whole week uh, after the grand final, a couple of days after, there wasn't one fight. There was people running down the, uh, <laughs> down Cronulla, nude. Uh, no one was blowing up. There was no complaints. It was just everyone loved everyone. So it was a um, pretty special night, a pretty special week. But I'd love just to be able to go back and experience, you know, in different ways, I suppose. Geez, you can imagine the alcohol sales. That'd be, <sighs> that'll never be broken in the shy, will it, that uh, particular month? Yeah, I doubt it. Well, it wasn't, I think someone put on $10,000 or twenty thousand dollars at the bar for us if we won so wow. they ended up coming through so we we're down there for a while too so yeah look what a memory it is i tell you i spoke to young uh, flanagan kyle and i said he was only much younger then and i said you know your dad will always he'll always be that coach of that first ever side so never forget that it's just such a huge moment and i spoke to flanner on the way in here to the studio and i said flanner how did it all kick off and he he actually took it back to the nines the year before why would he say that yeah, I think he's probably right, purely because we got a lot of belief back then. Uh, we had a, a few senior guys that all sort of started coming together. Mick Yannis just come mm. over, um, and he sent a lot of young kids over to the night. Jack Jack Bird, Val Holmes, uh, the list goes on. Me and Wade were, supposed, uh, were also supposed to go over. I actually had to pull out late because um, I tweaked my knee in a training session, uh, and the boys went through and got to the grand final. And um, we're looking at the side. I was watching it pretty closely, and I... I talking to Wade I said why can't we win the call we can win it mm. uh, obviously 2015 we didn't but um, one part that stands out for me is the North Queensland game up in North Queensland mm. and uh, we had a lot of belief from the nines but we got beat pretty convincingly against North Queensland and we had this fire in our belly for a long time from then but you could see it was, it was still burning everyone when we come back to 2016 pre-season um, and from there I'd never experienced a pre-season like it everyone put their head down uh, bum up, they got their diet right, um, mm. they sacrificed a lot, no one went out, uh, everyone was willing to do what was right for their teammate and um, yeah, it sort of slowly started to change on the field, you can feel it and then from there after we went on that little bit of a winning streak it all started. You started slow though didn't you, you started slow, you only won two of your first five and then 16 and 17 in a row. Yeah well, I think we, um, we, we had yeah, one win out of three or four, mm. uh, then we went to the Roosters. Uh, we were playing Roosters um, at Sydney Football Stadium and I think Gow got up the front of the bus and uh, Mickey and said, boys, we can't afford another loss. We need to start today. Uh, we went out. We had to put in a really good performance. Um, we come away with the win. We've got this belief. Then we played against Melbourne the following week. We just had this anger in our belly, our mm. fire, and uh, we, wanted to, we wanted to hurt. It, it wasn't go out and win. It was go out and hurt and just hurt with the ball in hand, hurt with, the, with our defence. And we got another win from there, and it just started to build. And then we got this <laughs> so much belief. I spoke to uh, your, your assistant coach, uh, Steve Price, who's now with Warrington and at the time. And uh, speaking about hurt, he said, we've got a team full of crazies. And he said, if you get a team full of crazies fit and switched on, it's very, very hard to contain. Yeah, he's probably right. We were very <laughs> crazy back then, uh, and it was good fun. Uh, yeah. Everyone was, uh, you know, getting angry at each other on the field in a good way. Uh, when I say, you know, if you know, if I drop a ball or do something, you'd have Wado blowing up at me, and, and vice versa. If Wado had done something wrong, I'd blow up at Wado, and we just had this always a competition going on at training, which helped us in the game. Uh, we built up a really good relationship from that. But that wasn't just me and Wade, that was everyone in our side. Mick Yannis was probably the best to explain. I remember playing against the under-20s going, oh, mate, these blokes are running hard. He goes, yeah, that's it, the stuff. And he turned it into a proper game. Mm. Um, 
and that, that's how it was. We, we trained the way we played and it just sort of come out in the field and again, it just it brought this belief to the team that we can do anything, we can beat anyone. Um, there's another little, little story you probably don't know about, but I had um, Jack Bird was my right centre at the time um, and young Val Holmes was on the edge mm. and we are getting beat convincingly at, at half times, 18-0, Parramatta were pumping us and it was at Shark Park. I said, boys, come on, switch on, pull your head in. And the boys go, don't worry about it, brah. We got this. We'll come back and win. This is Birdie and Val in the middle of the game. I was thinking, these guys' heads are off. Anyway, we come back and win. But you could just see the confidence that they were putting through the whole side. Um, yeah, it just sort of – it was a, a ricochet effect. Everyone just jumped on board with it. And well, great leaders like Gal, yourself, Wade, Pryor, uh, Fafita, Maloney. The you know, list goes on. list goes on, doesn't it? And a good thing, that was another good thing. Mickey Ennis actually pulled us aside and said, okay, this is how we're going to run it. Me and Gal are going to be... Ennis, of course, They're yeah. going to be the uh, the leaders in the middle. So our Gal, obviously, our, our head leader, Mickey Ennis, was pretty much led our forwards around where mm. he wanted to be on the park. Then you had Wado on one edge. He, he controlled the left edge and I controlled the right edge. And everyone just jumped on board. Then you had Benny Barber sitting at the back whose defence on that uh, that year, mm. or organised defensive line that year was spot on and then his attack just flowed from there. So we had you know four or five really good leaders amongst them. You had obviously the guys who sort of executed our game plan, but everyone just jumped on board with their job and, and got the job done. You never missed a session. Uh Shane Flanagan would say that you would never, ever, ever miss a session. Did you pride yourself on that? Yeah, I was actually pretty disappointed in myself. When I first came over to the Sharks, 2013, um, had a little bit of a, a couple of uh, niggling injuries. 2014, I actually done my shoulder over in the World Cup, mm. and I, I missed the first 12, 12 months. I mean, 12 weeks, sorry. Um, and from there, I was super frustrated, and I said, that's it, I've got to get everything right. So from that day, I started to um, try and get my diet right, get back on the field, and I knew that 2015 had to be... Um, you know, I didn't want to miss any games. I didn't want to miss any training sessions, and I had to leave. Um, I suppose set a good example for young kids, and uh, for me, that was my goal. It was one of my personal goals, and um, it worked in my favour because it helped me out. It made me enjoy my football again. Mm. So, uh, as bad as um, 2014 was with injuries, it was probably the best thing I needed just to get my head right. So, yeah, I, I did. Yeah, did pride myself on not missing sessions or games. You had such a run, and but then you're spinning your wheels. You know you're in the finals, and you know you're going to be well-placed in the finals. And it ultimately comes after a few losses. Uh, you meet Canberra down there. So you actually finished third. You thought you'd finish first or second, but you actually finished third. And it's things are starting to unravel because Gal's not playing. He's injured. Yeah, back spasms a couple of days before the yeah. game. Yeah, first set of the match... Wado, HIA, he's gone. Yep. He's run to the pump. You're down 12 nil. It's yep. going pear shaped. It was going very pear shaped. But at the same time, um, we'd been in that situation before. But uh, I've got to give a massive rap to Kirk Capewell, who mm. had just come in and he played his first semi final in the NRL. Had a huge game for us, coming out over 20 carries, got us onto the front foot. And then Matty Pryor played 80 minutes in the middle and led our forward pack from start to, start to finish. He was just spot on. Now, Chad Townsend also probably didn't play his best game, and he got he got um, the hook and come yeah. off, and then he turned up the, the North Queensland game. So, you know, the little things um, went against us, but I think it was a test. Uh, but for me, it was probably the, uh, the most uh, enjoyable win that I had because when we got down there, we were 12-0 behind. Mickey Annis pulled us in, um, James Maloney, and said, boys, this is what semi-final football is about. Mm. You know, you're not going to have everything go your way, and that's how we react to it. So everyone just bought into it and said, okay, let's just get back into what we do, and that's, you know, grind teams away, get into the kick-chase game, try and bash them with our kick-chase and slowly wait for it to, to turn, and it did. Uh, the, the camera forward started to get tired. Uh, Hodgson went off, he hurt his ankle, and we started to get on the front foot. A couple of little offloads went our way and um, Val Holmes scored, got us back in the game and, um, yeah, ended up getting away with, I reckon, probably our best win and that's what gave us the belief to go on and win the goal. You had to have that week off. You got the sense that you couldn't go the long road. You had to find a way to win that game, which you did. Um, but back to Chad, that's a big, big call, hooking your half back. Uh, you're just about to go to a prelim if you can win the game. Chad gets hooked... Uh, and a bit of a backstory which people won't know about is that my mail is that there was something festering behind. Birdie was blowing up. So him and Chad weren't really connecting at the time. And Flano's thinking, well, I've got to do something here. But little known to people is that he hooks Chad. And the moment he hooks Chad, he knows it's only for that game. He knows that Chad, and he says this to Chad immediately after the game, that Chad will be the starting halfback in that big prelim. Yeah, absolutely. With rugby league, there's so many games that, you know, 
he can play really well and some games it just doesn't work for you. And it wasn't working for Chatty that night. Do I, there was no rift between him and Birdie at all. It was just that they weren't on the same page. It was hard to get the um, communication. Mm. It was super loud. You know, it was Birdie's first um, well, major final. Yep. Um, you know, Chatty again has just come over. He's just trying to find his feet again. And, you know, a little bit of nerves knowing that he's got to lead the team around. He's the mm. number seven. So, yeah, it wasn't his best night. But I'll tell you what, he turned up in that North Queensland game and he focused real hard during the week. And, you know, sometimes you need that reality check. Uh, but in saying that, um, yeah, the coaching uh, move from Shane Flanagan at that particular point in time in that game was huge. It paid off for us. But um, at the end of the day... Uh, yeah, he, he just he knows rugby league. Shane Flanagan knew that if he pulled him off, it was all right. He's just going to have to. Mm. It's just one of those nights that wasn't working for him. We'll start him again next week. I asked him, the coach. I said, because you just blasted out of the gates against the Cowboys, and as you say, you played to hurt, not so much to win, but you blasted out of the gates. And I asked him, I said, what was the moment in that match that you knew as a coach you were on your way to a grand final? He said, I knew before the match. He turned up. And the sea and the army of the people who had come from Cronulla to support it, he knew it was the time. Did you feel the same sort of thing? I, I understand totally where he's come from, mm. absolutely. Uh, when we turned up to that stadium and seen all the Sharkies fans, absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, never forget it. But for me, it was the the week off is when I knew we were going to win because we had that week off. We knew that we will play in North Queensland. Um, but again, we all sat down, we watched the game, and we, we were burning mm. from the 2015 game where they gave it to us up in North Queensland. And we, were, we didn't care about the result. We are going out to hurt. From the kickoff to the end of the game, it was on. We said everything we did, it was all about our line speed, our kick chase, and about our aggression. Um, and we didn't care about where the points were going to come from. We just knew they would come if we got all that right. We turned up to that game from the kickoff, and we were, we were going to hurt. We didn't care who it was. We didn't care who we were playing against. It was all about uh, getting our aggression right. And I'll tell you what, it, it was the most enjoyable game I'd ever played in because everyone... Uh, bought into it. And I'll never forget. I remember running back after you know, JT kicked downfield and Val Holmes picks the ball up and just picks him straight out and just runs straight at him, puts him on his backside and I tell you, an inspirational run from a winger. Mm. And then uh, it, it just, everyone just got into it. It was awesome. It was one of those games that um, I believe is probably our best game of the year. You're in the grand final, you know this, and you now know you're playing the Melbourne Storm. The very, very first day of October 2016, it's a Saturday. It's the day before the grand final. It's the captain's run. You drive yourselves out there. So if Lano doesn't want you on a bus, you all drive yourselves out there. How'd that session go? Well, that was the worst session I've ever been involved in, <laughs> to be honest with you. It was um, a bit of a shambles. We got out there. Uh, it was windy. Uh, it was so windy. It was, um, it was pretty crazy. Anyway, we sort of get into it. We do our warm-up as we usually do. And uh, we get the tennis rackets out and this, that, and the other. And um, Anyway... We get down there, say, okay, we're going to do a kickoff and do a couple of sets coming out of our own end and uh, kick off the fecky, mm. drops the ball. They go, all right, <laughs> kick it back, start again. Kick off the fecky, drops the ball. <laughs> he dropped the ball three times and uh, finally catches the ball. We get into it. Okay, all right, that's it. Second pass out of dummy half, drop the ball. <laughs> no, oh, what's going on? He dropped four balls in four sets. Are, are, you, are you actually in the fair dinkum stakes? Are you actually worried about him for the following day? No, not at all. No. Uh, no, I wasn't worried. I know what he could do, but it was just one of those days. The, winds, the wind was crazy. It was like um, they did, it was like we weren't supposed to do the session. Yeah. Anyway, so we started again. We finally got through a set. We got down there, we kicked the ball, we chased, we done, started our next set, dropped the ball. So no, <laughs> called it. That was it. That was it. How that, long was that? Like after a few minutes? Seriously, it would have been the whole session would have been with the ball in hand after our warm up, seven minutes. And not rattled at all. Not rattled. No. no it was weird. We got on the bus. I mean, we got on the uh, car because Mick Ennis when he goes, Groove and worried, worried about Aussie. that. Yeah, he goes. I don't know about, I don't know about the uh, that session. Mm. Go, don't worry about it. It's gone. We'll be right. We'll, we'll be sweet. It's all good. We turned up the next day, and it was just, it was just spot on. When I think, like, it was probably one of those games where Melbourne didn't make a mistake. We didn't make a mistake. Mm. To it. I think the first mistake and Fecky, in the game. Fecky had a blinder. Yeah, had a blinder. Everyone yeah. in our side had a blinder that night. Um, I'll never forget it. But um, yeah, the, the whole quality of that game, no one made a mistake. So, so. the instructions before the game is his tactic, Shane Flanagan, is to remind you guys of what you've done to get there. So he's talking about the metres that the back five are making up, the forwards, the job that you guys are doing in defence, all those sorts of things. And he talks about discipline. So the key for you guys for this match, <laughs> first first five sets... No penalties. Squeaky clean, no penalties. Now, what happens is, great kick chase. You get them a few metres out. Yep. Run to their fans at the Southern end. The grand final's underway. Will it be the weekend of the drought breakers? The Bulldogs did it last uh, yesterday in Melbourne. And look at the defence of Cronulla in the opening tackle. 
I don't know if you know this, by the way. You're involved in the first tackle of the match. Yep. Do, did you know this, that in your three finals games, you made the first tackle in each game? Did you, did you know that? Well, I did sort of because I, I knew we kicked to the right. Yeah. Um, and I always try and pride myself getting that first tackle. And that's why I was burning so much from the 2015 game because mm. Matt Scott, off the kickoff, thought, okay, get straight in front. I put my foot in the wrong position, missed him. We went right. straight through off the kickoff and it was all North Queensland from there. And I'll be honest with you, that's what gave me that burning desire for the next whole pre-season leading into the whole 2016 season, leading into every time we played North Queensland. It just gave me this burning desire. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I sort of had a, a bit of a, um understanding that we probably were in those tackles, but I didn't realise it was, yeah, every okay. second final series. There you go. First tackle, you, you nab them metres out from the goal line, tick. Flanagan's happy up in the box. <laughs> what happens to second tackle? Uh, by the way, Mick Ennis doesn't chase. He's not in the in the chase with you guys. Yeah, no, I think Mickey had a mindset of coming out and hurting again. Uh, so he knew that we'd dominate the uh, plays one because that's what we talked about for the whole mm. semi-final series. And play two, he just jogs down, makes sure he times his uh, gets his time right so he's not offside and just comes <laughs> out and tries to take off. I think Bromwich is yeah, Jesse, Jesse Bromwich's Bromwich, yeah. uh, head. Uh, obviously, a little bit mistimed and we get a penalty on play Was it two. mistimed? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I think he knew that it was, his, um, it was his last game that he was playing in the NRL, so he didn't really care about the consequences. He just wanted to show that we're coming here to get aggressive and um, set the platform and lay the, the, uh, lay the platform Sorry, and set the tone. And oh, I think it, I think he done that. And so it's Bob McLean has taken a high shot. Penalty's been already given. I think it's Michael Ennis Ray who hung his arm out. Takes McLean high. And that's a shame because the kickoff was a beauty. Maloney landing at a metre or two in from the dead ball. Gal, the captain, wasn't happy about it. <laughs> yeah. So he races up to Ennis and just jams him about the fact that within two tackles he's thrown the game plan out. What does Mick respond with? Oh, don't worry, mate. We're, this is how we're playing. We're going for it. This is how we're playing. We're going for it. <laughs> okay, so... And, and, and I vi this is one of the things that stands out for me, and I don't think anyone else would think about this sort of thing, but early in the game, there's a break by Maloney, and he links up with you. You're going to score the first try in a grand final. Like, what, what an amazing achievement that's going to be. You're sliding towards the line. You're getting dangerously dangerous close. That white stripe in front of you is looming and looming and looming, but it stops. <laughs> yeah. Ennis for Fita. Behind Gallon. Maloney. Maloney got through. Maloney's to the 20. Lewis. Lewis will slide over Willie. Is there a double movement? Is he short? He's short. Ennis. Townsend. Kicks out to Corabetti's wing. It might have come off Corabetti and gone into touch. I reckon, I reckon 98% of players would have reached their arm out and scored the try and, and therefore been penalised with a double movement. But I just reckon the temptation from any other player would have been too grand not to propel the arm and score that first try in a grand final. Did you remember that moment and what was going through your mind? No, don't worry. I wanted to reach out so bad. I wanted to score that try more than anything. And if I had my time over, I probably should have just offload it back to James Maloney oh, on right. the inside. But... Um, I knew when I got tackled, uh, if I pushed the pass or I tried to reach out, uh, it was definitely going to be a penalty. If you give Melbourne an opportunity, they're the best team offset starts by far. So they would have got a penalty, kicked it out, 30, 40 out. So know, in a played, split second, this is all running through the mind. Play three or four, they're attacking our line. We're yeah. probably up, under the, up the other end under the pump. So I just um, I knew I couldn't reach out and do it. So I thought I'd just put trust in the teammates that we'd come up with the right play. Um, Fortunately for us, two plays later, um, Gal and uh, Benny Barber come up with a little set play and uh, yeah. we got a try of it. So He knew it was going over the head, the kick of Townsend. So Gallon, oh, scrum base play, Barber. Barber scores. Gallon went to the blind side out of the pack. Picked the ball up, gave it in to Barber. Ch uh, Chad Townsend. We see that ends up on no the one ground. is held in the scrum and the ball has been grounded in the end goal. Have a decision and going to the board. So... It's going to be a try. Yeah, look, I, I knew I couldn't do it. I, I learned over the over the years. I've done it a couple of times um, through my career of playing and reaching out and scoring. They never get allowed, so um, I knew I just had to tuck it and just swallow my pride and um, believe in the team, and it worked. Great start. So you lead, and Maloney kicks all his goals in the match, which is fantastic. But 15 to go, Chambers scored, and this is a Melbourne Storm team. You don't like to concede points. You're down by two. Vunavalu has to be a target for the wide kick. There's an offload, finds Cronk, 
Now Hampton gets it back. Chambers steps out of it. Chambers for the line. Chambers. He scores a grand final try. Melbourne take the lead. Or you're down. You're down 12 8, whatever the score was at the time, but you're down. You're under the pump. There's 15 to go. What does Maloney say behind the post? Yeah, well, this is one part where Jimmy Maloney's leadership really stood up. And for me, it was great because you get in, you get opportunities where you sort of, you know, you know what to say. At that point in time, what do you say? You're in a grand final. We, we've 12 we've 8 played it would have been. So, would have yeah, been 12 8. We've been playing such good football. Um, we haven't made an error. And now we're down 12 8 against probably the best side in the competition, mm. the best defensive side in the competition by far. But James Maloney goes in, boys, listen, we talked about it all year. Same message, same message. But just, um, he said it perfectly on grand final night, but he just said, look, our backs are against the wall now. Everything's been going our way. And we knew tonight everything wasn't going to go our way. Mm. He goes, give me three good defensive sets. We'll get the ball and we'll get an opportunity up there. So we said, you know what? It is what it is. We've got to get up there. We've got to defend well and hope that they make an error and, and wait for our opportunity. So we, did, we got up there and we, we got it done. And, and the message that he sent was calm. Um, it was collected. had everyone's eyes. Everyone bought into it. And... Uh, we did. We got there. We put a couple of good defensive sets on. We got our opportunity, and then Mickey Ennis comes up with a huge play. Just on that play, and we're just getting back to that um, three sets. It was like an arm wrestle. You're creeping up towards the line, and then all of a sudden there's a kick, and Barber drags it back towards the halfway line, and, and the, the try is coming. Now Ennis had a rule with Fafita about the play that ultimately scores the match win in the grand final. What was his rule with Andrew? Oh well, I remember during the year he said to Andrew, "If you're not running hard, I'm not giving you the ball." So every time Andrew wanted the... So if you were set up... He was set up, would have always have shape, but he mm. always said to Andrew, if you're not going to run as hard as you possibly can, I ain't giving you the ball. So Andrew's mentality started to, in 2016, pick mm. up about every time he wanted the ball, he was running hard. That particular point in time when he scored that try in grand final night, he was steaming onto it. And I don't think that he had 10 blokes that were going to stop him. I think there was five or six Melbourne guys in front of him just under the post, and somehow he was running hard. Mick Ennis believed in his system... Picked him out, hit him beautifully on the chest, and obviously, um, big Andrew's hard to stop. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, to have six Melbourne guys on you, best defensive team in the competition, yeah. and still finds the line, mind blowing. So here's Ennis now. Fafita tries to crash his way over, he does. Fafita got the ball over the line. Michael Ennis and Ben Barber celebrate. Five, they mate. saw what I saw. I've got try. Grounded in the end goal, now looking to determine that it hasn't been knocked on in the lead up. It's all good there. All that put down is good. He's trying to work out whether or not he's bobbled it here as he's gone into the defence. He'll have to get to the other side, but it looks like he's got control of it the whole time. Sure has. And the big fella, he's just an awkward big thing. He's hard to handle. Do you remember the mindset of that last set? trying to hold on for this premiership, this first ever premiership? Do you yeah, remember that? I do, because I actually watched it... Uh, not too long ago, actually, and uh, Flano come up with this game during the year, and we'd started it very, very early, and we'd had uh, six defenders mm. and 12 attackers, and it was full field, but you weren't allowed to let them score. You had to defend a set of six, and then you'd change over. So, so what was it? So it was six? Six defenders, yep. full field, 12 attackers. Wow. So you'd have no fullback, but 12 attack. So we just had, to, and the boys were basically, they were attacking, they got to play offload, it's two-handed, two-handed touch at the time and then we built it up until it was tackle we had to stop it so you're just scrambling so madly just scrambling 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 um so we do this continuously all year um over and over and over but when you watch the actual grand final and i watched that set that when you watch it it's exactly the same as the game we played all year the way that uh they were attacking from the ball left to right side to side skipping over running crosses long cut out passes but the you watch the defense and they are so, running sideways but there's not just one there's you know 13 guys running sideways going back shutting the gate and uh eventually we come up with the right play there was no uh space for the melbourne storm to get through and um Ricky Latelli obviously finally yeah. makes the tackle and the bell goes, so. Wow. They're about two metres into enemy territory. It's gone away there for Kronk to give it out wide. Here's Corabetti. He's got them turning around. It's now with Vunavalu. Vunavalu, the season's top try scorer, got the ball away. Bromwich to Smith. Smith to Hampton. Hampton, can he find a gap? He gets the ball away. It's back to Smith. Smith gets it away to Kronk. Kronk's got Corabetti with it. Have they got a chance here? Corabetti's put down. The siren sounds. Cronulla have won it. Cronulla have won it. 
14 to 12. You can turn the light out now. Look at this. Amazing scenes from the Olympic Stadium. Uh, Andrew Gray, head of high performance. He obviously plays a major part in that as well, to have you so fit, and success seems to follow him. Andrew Gale, I can't give a, a big enough rap. Um, I love Andrew. He done everything for me to get right. He got my body mm. spot on. He knew um, when to leave me on the field, when to pull me off the field. Um, looked after my injuries spot on. Uh, he's one of the best I've been with by far. Um, and again, he knew when to, to top us up and when to pull us all back. Uh, so that was, again, when we went after that 16 games in a row and we had a draw, he knew that we were... We'll, yeah, at our peak, but mm. we had to top up our. Uh, he used to say, you know, top up the tanks, put some more uh, petrol in the tank. So we had to, we trained pretty hard for that four weeks, where we went on a bit of a, a losing streak. But he knew that when he pulled us back just before semi final time, it was like shooting us out of a cannon. And um, I think he got it spot on, 2016. He's the sole reason, and and I haven't got many friends on this argument, but I, I think the Tigers are morals to make the eight, and purely on the back of him. They missed by one game last year. They've got him. I just think they're certain he's to make the eight. But anyway, back to the Sharkies. So you've won the grand final. You've jumped over each other. And you can't wipe the smile off your face. But there's one more thing to come. If the night can't get any better, it's about to. You're standing there with a great player. And then what happens? Yeah, Billy is... I, I end up getting a really good relationship Billy with Billy. Slater. Through, Billy Slater, yeah. Through, um, through the Kangaroos. And uh, I know uh, Sonia got, gets along with uh, Nicole very well. Um, yeah, and then... We we're sitting there having a chat. He's come over and said, "Congratulations." Um, you know, it was as hard as it is to see his teammates lose. He said, "If anyone was going to win, he'd love to see us the Sharkies win it because we hadn't hadn't won it." So he's a very he's a real gentleman, Billy. Uh, but then next thing you know, my name gets called out uh, that you've received the Clive Churchill medal. Wow. My head nearly fell off. Um, Man of the match, ladies and gentlemen, receives the Clive Churchill medal, and in 2016, it goes to the back rower from the Sharks, Luke Lewis. Uh, first of all, uh, sort of lost the words, but I just want to say to Melbourne, uh, you'd be the benchmark all year, you're a superstar side, it's always a great challenge and fortunately enough for us, we did come up with the points tonight, but thank you very much for a great game. Uh, just to my boys, uh, this year ain't possible if it weren't for you boys, so I love you all. Uh, to, my, uh, to my family, my mum, stepdad, sister, my wife and my beautiful baby girl. I love you. You made 2016 uh, the most memorable year of my life. So thank you very much. And uh, for the rest of the Cronulla supporters here and back home, I love you all. See you back there. I didn't know what to do. Couldn't find my wife because she wasn't on the field at the time, but I had my daughter Hazel with me. But to win a grand final and to be the best on ground, it just doesn't get better, does it? Yeah, it, it's... It still gives me goosebumps thinking yeah. about it. It's, uh, it's absolutely mind-blowing. But um, again, I remember saying on the night, for me, I'd never play near a team where it was so team-orientated, where 1-17 to 17, uh, did their job and also end some to turn up and, and back each other up. Um, for me, I, I think I still believe that it could have went to any player on that field that night. Um, for my name to get pulled out of the hat, I don't know if it's coincidence or um, you a know, bit of good luck or whatever, but... I was doing some weird stuff during the year that I believe that uh, yeah, was starting share, to share work. Yeah, share that so, story. That's a really good story. If, if you're into your affirmations and yeah, those yeah, sorts of things, oh, you like this. I do a lot of reading about you know goal setting and all that sort of yeah. stuff. So they said if you're something that you want to achieve, you need to write it down and you need to look at it consistently. And it talks about throwing it out to the world and it, mm. it comes back to you. It's in the book. It's called The Secret. The Law of Attraction. The Law of Attraction. Mm. So um, anyway, I used to get into my uh, shower. Mm. Uh, after about three or four wins in a row, I just had this really strong belief about our side and where we could get to. And I just started believing well, for some reason we're going to get to the grand final. I had a picture up um, that always set goals about a picture that I wanted, a picture of my daughter sitting on grand final night holding the Clive Churchill medal. And um, anyway, I'd see it every day, but I'd go into the shower, I'd get me toothbrush out because I'd be toothbrush and mm. toothpaste in there. And um, I'd always ride in the steamy window, uh, 2016 Clive Churchill medal. Luke Lewis. 
on the back of your on the back. So you know that's your toothbrush and yeah. the back part of it. So I'd get on the steam and I'd just wow. write it on there. And I'd write it about five six times. And I'd go over to the door and then write it until I had no more space. And then so I go, what are you doing in the shower? I, go, <laughs> I had to quickly wash it off. <laughs> I just didn't see it. And then um, yeah, then I'd get out and then do it. And then I'd do it in the morning. And I'd do it at night. I'd do it in the morning. I'd do it at night. And I did it every every shower I had. Wow. The whole of 2016. Tell me, did you did you when you had the medal that first shower after? Did you feel compelled to do it one more time? No, I no, started, that was it. I actually started writing new goals. <laughs> did you? Yeah, it was weird. I said because because it actually worked. I said, oh, maybe it does work. Yeah. So I just started writing new goals, um, <laughs> which again it did come off, but um, yeah, not to the extent of, of the Clive Churchill medal, but. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty mind-blowing. When I tell the story, people go, mate, you're, you're cuckoo. <laughs> but it worked, and uh, yeah, I remember telling you the first yeah, time. Yeah, and, I uh, loved it. Yeah, so oh, I'm, I'm glad I got to get it out there, but um, some people probably don't believe it, but it's uh, a tough one. It's hard to explain, but it yeah, it worked. And the other thing was, too, I had a dream way back in, just before, I, when I left Penrith, when mm. I come to the Sharks, that we're going to win the grand final. It didn't know what year, but I, I had this vision um, in a dream that I'd won the Sharks grand final. I, ran, I woke my missus up at three in the morning. I said, Sonia, I've got to go to the Sharks. I'm going to win a grand final. Wow. And she goes, can't you just tell me in the morning? And uh, yeah, lo and behold, it, uh, it ended up coming up. So I think there's some weird, wonderful things happening out there at the moment. So that moment, just to, to finish things off, that moment, the 2016 Clive Churchill medalist, Luke Lewis. Sonia's not there. Hazel's got to go in the hands of a great babysitter named Billy Slater. <laughs> and you know the irony and all that? He won, he, he won it the next year. Yeah, mate. He's won it a couple of times, though. Yeah. He's a superstar. <laughs> he's a superstar. He was pretty close to going to go to, but um, no, he's a, he's a good man. And, you know, um, he looked after Hazel, found Sonia, and uh, yeah, lo and behold, he wins 2017 Grand Final and Clive Churchill medal. So I don't know if there's anything in that, but who knows? Has it been fun sharing the, that great moment? Oh, absolutely. I just, even now, just thinking back, it, it puts a smile on my face purely just because there's so many great moments during that year. Uh, we didn't talk about all of them, but um, yeah, it's just a great ride. Uh, the teammates that you're, you know, you can go through all the training sessions and some of the arguments and laughter that we had. And yeah, I'd love to just relive it for a night. Lukey Lewis, congratulations, Thanks, mate. mate. Well done. And I'll leave it with the, uh, the great rugby league philosopher, Paul Gallen. You can turn the porch light off. <laughs> And to all you people back in the Shire, turn your porch lights off because we're coming home with a trophy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, 